Well, hello designers. Today we're going to be talking about our brand identity. We're going to get started on the project. Uh, you see my finished example here. So what we're going to be working towards in this whole unit is you're going to be creating a one of a kind logo. Okay, so this is my finished logo. You're going to create a logo type and a business card. But what you see here is my experimentation in it because you'll see that this is my end logo that I ended up with. But I've got some variation that I've, I've worked on over here. The same with the business cards. So you're coming up with more than just one. You're coming up with some variations and then you're picking from your various ideas your best, okay? So let's get started. We're gonna start with the template today. So let's go to File, Open, Courses, Art, Print Shop, and then it's in the Templates folder and it's called Branding template and we're going to click open so it should look like this so stop the video and locate this file now all right we're going to save this so we're going to go to file save as i want you to save it as a cloud document we're going to save it in your projects folder and again call it with your first name always makes it easier and just call it brand and we're going to click save and then we're ready to roll so our first step in branding is we've got to identify our three colors that we're going to be using for our logo. And we do limit to three colors. There are some supplemental colors, but three main colors, and we're going to talk about why that's important later. In order to do that, you've got three photo boxes. Some of us may actually only use one and might have two other accent colors that we don't with, use with the logo. Some of us will use all three. So we're going to refer back to the document we've already created where we've chosen what our color or colors are going to be. And we're going to change these three different boxes for our logo color. So I'm going to simply click on this box and I'm going to double click to open up the color picker. And let's say I know I want some shade of a red. I'm going to, or let's go back to my example is, is I'm going to do a flower shop and I want some version of a yellow so I can click and drag wherever I want in this I can decide okay if this is the color is it too dark too light do I want it more pastel -y? do I want it more bright intense but I'm going to find the color yellow that I like and I'm going to click OK notice it changes that color I'm going to do that for all three colors so let's say my other color, I know I want an orange, but I want it to have some contrast. So I want it to be kind of a darker orange. Not as bright as that yellow, so it has some offset. And then again, I'm going to pick a third accent color if I want to. If I don't, if I know I only want to use these two colors for my logo, I can click and drag and delete that. Or... I can pick an accent color that I think goes well, and I actually kind of like that, but I think it looks nice with those two colors. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Stop the video and select up to three colors that you are going to use for your logo. All right, excellent. So now we've got to create the color recipe because we want to know what exact shade this is. So if I wanted to replicate it another time, I could tell, I could send it off to a printer and say, this is the exact yellow I'm going to use. To do that, we click on the box, and if you double click the color picker, you're going to notice it opens up this with our formula. So you may want to write this down in your sketchbook. So the color number is right here. So if I copy and paste that, I can come in here with my type tool and I can put the number here and paste that in there. I'm also then going to do that with all of the others. So I'm going to do my cyan, my magenta, my yellow, and my black because that's the CMYK color formula for printing and that's listed here. So again, I would just write these numbers down instead of copying and pasting over. So my cyan would be 3, my magenta is 27, yellow is 64%, and black is 0. So you want to write those down and you would include those there. Okay, so stop the video and get all your color recipes typed in here. All right, excellent. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to save these colors so it makes it easier so we don't have to go back and keep resampling these. We're going to open up our swatches panel to do that. I'm going to close my color panel just so I don't get confused here. I'm just separating these out. And I'm going to expand my swatches panel down so I get some nice gray here. And then when I want to add this color, there's a couple ways I can do it. The easiest way is to simply click on the foreground color swatch and drop that in there, and it's going to add that 
as my color. And I can actually rename that by double clicking and I can give it a name. So I can say my yellow and click OK. So again, you'll do that for each of your colors. So I'm clicking on it. I'm clicking and dragging and dropping it into the box. I'm renaming it my orange and so on and so forth. Okay? Even though I misspelled orange. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this does not save for other documents. So if I opened up another document, these colors would not be in here. It only saves according to this document in Illustrator that I've created. All right. So stop the video and save your three up to three swatches. If you only did one, then you only need one. All right. Excellent. All right. So now we're ready to start talking about our logo. But before we can start designing our logo, we actually got to start coming up with some thumbnail sketches. So we're actually done here in Illustrator today. We can close this out because we've got a sketch and that's what artists do. Um, you should have a sheet that was handed to you from me or some other general instructions that's going to talk about sketching. But before we can even sketch, we got to talk a little bit about what goes into a logo. You should have already watched in the slide presentation that's posted in Google Classroom these two videos, one on the art of logo design and one on um, some of the history of some famous logos here. And again, I probably would have shown those in class already, but in case I didn't or you missed it, please stop the video and locate these two slides and watch those videos now. All right, so when it comes to logos, here's what you need to know is that number one, they're not the only part of the brand, but they're probably the most important part because they're the part that gets repeated the most and it's in your face and it's put on everything. It's put on the t-shirts and the company letterhead and on the website and on the products. It's all over the place. And so once it gets established, they rarely change. So yes, companies that have been around a really, really long time like Pepsi, you can see that obviously it has evolved over time, but those evolutions are actually there. It's slow and even they retain some of the same qualities. Notice the colors never changed. They've updated a little bit to make it sleeker and change for trends. But once a logo is established, they rarely change it unless something really happens, like in the case of BP Oil, where they've got to rebrand completely because they've got to do some damage control and they're trying to change the face of their company. Otherwise, most companies don't rebrand. You need to know that there's two different types of logo systems. So you've got the logo type, which is the company name, similar to like Disney or Coca-Cola. And then you've got a logo. Every company will have a logo type because every company has a name. So they have to have their font that they use for their company over and over again. But not every company will have a logo. So like Disney does not have a logo, but it does have a logo type. Nike has both a logo and a logo type. And like you saw with Pepsi, they'll commonly use them together. Similar to what we do with the Rock Falls High School with our RF and our Rocket, we have it as a logo system so you can pull it apart. So you can use just the RF or you can use the, the Rocket. Same with Nike. Sometimes they use Nike, sometimes they use the Swish. Adidas does the same thing. You can combine it and pull it apart. But not every company has a logo. You are going to do both a logo and a logo type. So we can do similar to Pepsi where you could pull them apart if you wanted to or you can group them together just like we have here at Rock Falls High School. Although every logo is different, and like I said, it's not an exact science, there are some basic six guidelines or rules that you follow. And it's very, very dominant on what you know about shape and color psychology. Most every logo is going to follow these six basic rules or guidelines, and you're going to be required to do that for your branding for your project. Number one is that you really should limit between one and three colors. Most every logo that you see Yes, I know Google is an exception, but most every other logo is going to use a limited color palette for two reasons. Number one, it makes it way easier to remember and a logo needs to be memorable. It needs to be easy to memorize. The other reason is you're trying to establish your branding. And remember, you've got to be clear and consistent with your message. Colors communicate. So if you're using a bunch of different colors, well, your communication is all over. If you're using red and blue and green, well, what is it that your company is? Color is a clear indicator of what your company's personality is. And so you want to pick those colors that tell us in a very clear and consistent message, this is what my company is about. So McDonald's is about good tasting food. It's family friendly. It's fun, right? 
so one to three colors max. The next rule is that your logo really needs to be simple. Think of the Nike logo, super duper simple. It has to be simple, again, for two reasons. Number one, it's got to be easy to remember. If it's a super complex logo, it's not as good. Yes, I know Starbucks, I use it as a lot as a reference. It's more complex, but I challenge you right now in your head, think exactly what that looks like. You're like, well, I think there's some stars in there. And so that one's one of those outliers. It's, it's not really all that simple. It's a little bit more difficult to, to remember. However, if I say Nike, you all know that switch. You know exactly what it looks like. You could probably draw it from memory. So simplicity is important in helping us memorize. Also, it's really important because your logo, like I said, is going to be used on everything. It's going to be on the trucks, which are really big. It's going to be on the monograms on the shirt. It needs to be shrunken down in the key code that goes on the website. So it's got to work really, really small and really, really big. So if you have something that's really complex, if you shrink it down teeny tiny, you're going to lose legibility. You're not going to be able to see that logo. So you want to keep it really simple for that reason. Another one is to avoid trends. Remember what I said, logos don't change. Once you have it established, you don't want to have to change it. So you don't want to pick anything that's too trendy. You really don't want to pick a color that's too trendy. You don't want to pick a shape or a style that's really trendy, like maybe a certain texture or something, like obviously something like that, that's straight up 80s, right? You want to pick something that's classic, that you're not going to have to change or you're not going to regret a few years down the road because you picked something that was too trendy at the time. Rule number four says aim for distinction. And you will be doing this in your next section here where you are sketching out your ideas and you are looking for your competition, which you've already, some of you may have already done. Your logo needs to look different than the other companies that you're competing against. Because if it looks too similar, two things. Somebody might wanna buy your product and they accidentally buy your competitors because it looks too similar or if you get big enough, you could get sued by that other company if they were established first. So you want distinction, especially related to companies that are in your demographic, your area. So for instance, Nike is going to want to make sure that they're completely different than Adidas and Puma and all the other athletic companies. You will, from time to time, find some similar logos if they're not in the same category. So for instance, the Mini Cooper logo, which is the car company, looks an awful lot like Steak and Shakes. But you know what? I'm not really going to confuse a car company and a hamburger joint, right? So you do, you still want to make sense of those. You want to make sure that you're still not having that confusion, but you want to make sure that your logo is distinctly different from all of your competitors. So if you haven't done that little step to look at your competition and research those other logos, you need to make sure you get that done before you start your sketches. Number five is attitude and relevance. And this goes all back to shape and color psychology. Make sure that you're using colors and shapes that clearly identify your brand's personality, right? So, and that goes not just for the hue that you use, but the saturation level of the color and the value. So a very pale pink is very different than a hot pink. A dark burgundy red is very different than a pale colored red. So they, they even have some nuance within the hue itself. All right. The other thing is you want to be conscious of un, unintended symbolism in your shapes and designs. A great example of this is the swastika. Certain symbols have gotten used and their meaning changes over time or may have a, a symbolic meaning to a certain group of people that you're not aware of. So you want to make sure that you do a little bit of research and know what it is that your symbol actually stands for. So you don't want to mistakenly represent something that you didn't mean to represent, okay? And then the last thing here is that when you're designing both your logo and logo tag, you want to make sure that they are unified. So you want to pick a font that relates back to your logo. For instance, if your logo is very organic and has lots of curving lines, you don't want to pick a very boxy font. So you can see here with Pepsi, their logo has a sweeping curving line in it. So notice it picked a font that also has lots of curves in it. They should be unified not just in the colors, but also in the shapes, the lines, the textures that are used in both. Okay, so once we're done here, then you're ready to get started. You should have another form here that talks about thumbnail sketches. I should have given you some more directions in class, but you are ready to go. You know everything you need to know to get ready and start sketching today. Good job.